Last time, we talked about Crossley suitcase players and why they are not suited for being your first turntable. But does Crossley have good product that can fit this need? While researching, the C line from Crossley caught my attention. From my guess, the C might stand for contemporary. And today, I'm going to review the two most budget-friendly models in the C line, the C3 and C6 from Crossley lineup, to see if this product line is the hidden gem for the vinyl community. I'm Jojo, a designer and audiophile. Welcome to my channel. On paper, C3 is the cheapest option in the C-Line. The unique look is what makes it stand out. And C6 rocks a minimalist design that is rather popular. Brands like U-Turn, Project, and Rega all run similar styling for their products. I will list this back for the C3 and C6 here so you can take a look. Right out of the box, I notice how cheap and rough the C3 is. There are steel frays from the factory sticking on the base. The base finishing is rough and full of flaws. Visible dust trapping in the coating, random scuff marks and uneven corner rounding keeps reminding me that this is a budget model. On top of that, the torque arm is made of plastic instead of metal. The counterweight quality is poor, the plastic dial does not have a clean edge, and the machining of the weight itself is rough. After assembling, it looks pretty special from a distance, but fail if inspecting closely. A crossing that cannot look closely? Hmm. But there is one redeeming quality. The C3 can be found on sale for as slow as 60 bucks at place like Half Right Books. For 60 bucks, this look is killer. The quality of C6 is another story. It is noticeably better than the C3. The base is heavy and the finishing is fine. The tone arm is mostly metal and feels solid. It also came with a clear acrylic lead which finishing the look. The hinge of the lead sometimes makes a squeaky noise, but overall C6 build quality can rival other turntables like U-Turn or Project. Satisfying for a turntable at this price point, especially if you find them on sale for 100 bucks. The C6 also came with Bluetooth connecting feature. Establish a connection for the C6 is easy, but there is about two second delay between the playback and you actually putting the needle on. It is a convenient feature, but the sound quality is lesser than connecting the C6 directly to the receiver. One noticeable con on both turntable is the manual. The manual didn't explain well how to assemble and tune the turntable. Now, let's look at critical components one by one. The C3 and C6 both have three supporting feet with anti-slip rubber, but neither of them has isolation or anti-vibration treatment. C6 is noticeably heavier than C3, despite having a smaller footprint. Besides the weight differences, both of them sit safe and sound without any concern. Good for them. Now let's look at the platter. The platters on the two turntables are both metals. Both are heavy and smooth, great for entry-level pricing. The C6 has a slight bevel on the edge that makes picking up records after playing easier. Little thing like this is a sign of caring about detail. The motor on the C3 and the C6 has distinctive quality differences. The motor on the C3 is noticeably noisier than the C6, but interestingly, the power supply for the C3 has higher amperage output and seems like better quality. All of the crossing model I experience have the torn arm as the trigger for the motor. Whenever you move the toner out of the rest position, the motor starts automatically, and the speed is controlled internally. Personally, I prefer a separate switch like LP120. The semi-automatic function here is minimal and in line with the look. Here, you can see the speed test for both the C3 and the C6. The tone arm is one of the biggest differences between C3 and C6. C3's tone arm is mostly made of composite plastic. Critical functions are provided, but a lot of flaws in the details. At the head part, you can fine tune or change a cartridge like a normal turntable with a two screw on top. But the head is not changeable, so you cannot fast switch between cartridge as turntable like LP120. 
The turn-on base of C3 does not provide tuning capacity besides setting the tracking force with the counterweight. Unlike most turntables using threads for mounting the counterweight, C3 uses a small metal piece on the bottom of its plastic rod instead. An obvious cost-saving design here. Because of the rough quality of the counterweight, setting the correct weight for the cartridge is a bit harder, but manageable. Some really bizarre design for C3 is the queuing lever. The damping for the lever simply doesn't exist. If you don't lower the lever as gentle as you can, the lever drops the cartridge onto the record like a stone and makes louds pop. Trust me, ain't nobody like that. The next flow is the unnecessarily complex steps after playing a record. Normally, we turn the lever up to raise the tone arm at the end of the playing, then we put the arm to the rest position, lock the arm, and done. However, the C3's armrest is set at the height of the playing position. So you need to lower the lever for the arm to rest in the armrest, lock the arm, then pull up the lever to prevent accidents on the next session. When pulling up the lever, the whole tow arm module will get pulled up as well, adding a lot of steps and probably unnecessary wear and tear on the parts. Pretty baffling if you ask me. Now, let's look at the C6. C6 tow arm module is made out of aluminum. The machining is clearly higher quality. It still doesn't provide a changeable head show, but it has more tuning capacity than the C3. You can tune the azimuth by losing a screw on top of the arm base Fine-tune the angle of your cartridge, an upgrade to a better cartridge is also possible. The machining on the counterweight is better and smoother. The C6 using a metal rod with thread for the counterweight, making adjustment easier and smoother. The q lever is buttery smooth and well damped. It. The bizarre design on the C3 no longer applies to the C6, but there are still some features missing. On the C6, the height of the tone arm module is fixed, and so does the anti-skating. But on the higher-end model C8 and the flagship C10 and C20, the anti-skating is adjustable. Let's take a look at the anti-skating tabs for both C3 and C6. The preset anti-skating is not a deal breaker, but it is something you should put in mind because different cartridges require different anti-skating strengths. I can only assume the preset on the C3 and C6 is for the Audio Technica AT3600L cartridge that came with the turntable. When switching to a higher grade cartridge, the preset anti-skating might not be ideal which will affect the balance between the left and the right channel. Noticeably, some popular brands have similar limitations like the C6. U-Turn does not provide adjustable anti-skating across their lineup, and Project does not provide this feature on their entry-level product like T1. If you are planning on upgrading the turntable system, I will make sure choosing the model that has an adjustable anti-skating feature. Both the C3, C6, and the C8 is equipped with Audio Technica AT3600L cartridge with MP5 stylus. The dearly white cartridge is also featured on other entry level turntables like the Audio Technica AT60 series. The recommended tracking force is 3.5 grams, which actually makes setting up a bit harder due to the dial on both C3 and C6 only goes up to 2 grams. A digital skill for setting up the tracking force here is highly recommended. Having a skill in hand actually takes away lots of guessing work and trouble for the process. For the Crossy lineup, it is not until the flagship C10 and C20 that you get the Autophon OM5E cartridge pre-installed with the turntable. If you want another cartridge, make sure you factor that into the price when comparing products. Like I said in the last video, the cartridge is the soul of a turntable. It sets the fundamental sound you get from the turntable. I put C6 together with my LP120 USB, which has an 1895E cartridge with LP Gears Carbon Stylus. I put both turntables through my Marantz NR1609's Phono Preamp to minimize other factors. 
The nuances and details from the 1895E straight out beat the AT3600. The entry level 3600 sounds flat and has less separation between instruments. The overall sound of 3600 is thinner than 1895E and it's more V curve, having fatter bass and brighter highs, but lower resolutions overall. If we say the cartridge is the structure of the turntable sound, the phono preamp the phono preamp sets the color for the sound. Here, the lower quality phono preamp on C3 is a deal breaker for me. It sounds similar to their higher end suitcase player. For turntable standard, it fails badly. The C3 building phono sounds grainy, lacking details and dynamic. The high is shrilling and the bass is booming. If you pick the C3, make sure you have a separate phono preamp. The building one is not worthy of your time or your year. On the other side, C6 Phono Preamp sounds good for the price. Comparing C6 Phono with my Marantz, the sound from the C6 is thinner, colder, and faster. The different Phono Preamp is like a different filter for photos. When taking the extremely bad quality Phono Preamp out of the picture, the question became which kind of sound suits you and your music. The Marantz Phono is slower and warm, which gives us a bit more lingering sound, a sense of air and you can feel the resonance from the body of the instruments better. It is more musical and emotional, suits for music like jazz. Combining with 1895E cartridge, which is decent and has more detail than Crossley's 3600 cartridge, the sound is wonderful. The detailed emotions are all there. The Crossley, however, is the opposite. It sounds brighter, faster, and thinner, or you can describe it as sharper or cleaner sounding. For some music, you might prefer this over the Marantz Phono Preamp. Also, when using Bluetooth to connect the C6, you are using the internal Phono Preamp plus the Bluetooth module inside to connect. A similar sound quality and character as using the built-in Phono Preamp are expected, but slightly worse. While testing, I found that when connecting C6 and C3 with the Marantz preamp, the distinctive sound of Marantz is presented, and so does the lacking of detail from the cartridge. This means that you can shift the sound character to where you're liking by switching the phono preamp. But if you cannot get enough details, separations, or other virtue from the cartridge, a better phono preamp is not likely to change that. The phono preamp is the device to amplify the signal. If the thing you are looking for is not in the signal, the phono preamp cannot generate that for you. Do C3 and C6 qualify as the hidden gem of the turntable? Obviously, C3 is out because of all the flaws I show in the review. But if you get it for below 100 bucks, which is at the same range as the suitcase players, the C3 is definitely better. Despite some missing feature, the C6 and above for Crossley is something you should put on your radar. The build quality, parts quality, and design are all good. I might say it is on par with popular brands like U-Turn, Projack, and Audio Technica's product that rock a similar design, but they are more budget friendly. If you can't get the C6 for $99 on sale, even after adding the popular Audifone Red or 1895VM cartridge, the total price is still really competitive, and it beats popular options like the AT60 series out of the water, period. But if you want a separate phono preamp to change the sound character of the C6 on top of the cartridge upgrade, congratulations, you outgrow the ceiling of the C6. If you want to stay with Crossley, I would suggest going for the C8 or top of the line C10 and C20 for the get-go. That way, it is more future-proof, and you can find them for a really good price that other popular brands cannot match because they carry the infamous Crossley name. If you enjoyed the show, please like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. That's it for today, and we'll see you next time. Peace.